Okay, hello YouTube, it's Sonny here with Hobbies of a Man once again, and today we are doing another Kaiju number 8 chapter review. Today we are reviewing chapter 39. Now, I do want to apologize for this. This was supposed to go up on the weekend that the chapter came out, but I was out of town, and so I didn't have time to record it. Um, and so here we are, a week later, but thank God the uh, schedule has changed so that it's only two times a month instead of like the usual three or four. Um, so I am doing it now. Um, I don't know if, what type of schedule I'm gonna do. I don't know if I'm gonna do it on the weeks that we don't have chapters or if I'm gonna do it on the weekend that the chapter releases from now on. Um, I haven't really decided. I think it's gonna depend on how um, my schedule once school starts uh, uh, is affected. Um, so I'm gonna defer deciding on that until later. For now, we're just gonna do it, uh, whatever Saturday I have time to do it on, um, after the chapter releases. But anyway, um, there really is no news to talk about today, so we're just gonna move on to the recap. Um, but before the recap, obviously, if you guys wanna watch all of my other Kaiju number 8 chapter reviews slash discussions and some other tidbits of kaiju number eight content you guys can check out the uh playlist which is at the end of the video or right up there if you guys want to or whatever i think it's on this side actually but it doesn't really matter point is that you guys can check it out on the card if you want to um or you can just like watch the uh wait till the end of the video and then click on the playlist um but yeah let's get into the recap now Kafka collapsed in chapter 38. He basically ended up getting really tired after managing to not kill Mr. Shinomiya, Kekoru's dad, um, and he gets taken to get healed. And then the JDF basically starts arguing about whether Kafka should be uh, left to live or not. Um, and eventually Mr. Shinomiya just puts his foot down and he's like, no, we're gonna let him live. I don't care what you guys are, are saying. We need his combat ability since he's the only kaiju level person like actually kaiju level that we have available to us and he should be relatively easy to control as long as he doesn't go berserk again and so basically kafka um has been allowed to live and then mr shinomiya shows up at kafka's hospital bed to talk to him and they have this kind of interaction where kafka kind of surprises him by being happy that he didn't kill him because he doesn't want Kikoru to like feel bad that her dad died and stuff like that. And they also have this kind of moment where like Mr. Shinomiya kind of accepts him and kind of acknowledges him by calling him Kafka Hibino. But um, Kafka is still not convinced. And so he has that whole kind of like shonen main character thing where he's like, no, I will get you to acknowledge me and respect me um, one of these days and I will prove that I am human regardless of the fact that I have a, a core instead of a heart, um, which means he's like actually a kaiju as opposed to a human. So yeah, I mean, it was a pretty good one. I thought it was pretty emotional. I thought it was really cool. And it uh, kind of finished up this arc or at least this kind of like section of the story. I don't know necessarily that it finished the arc, um, but it definitely moved on to something else for the time being. So yeah. That's basically the recap. If you guys want to watch the whole review, check out the card up there, um, whichever side it, it's on, and uh, watch that before we get into this week's uh, review section, right? So let's get into it. Chapter 39 has 25 pages, which is pretty good. We did essentially see a small but meaningful increase in page count now that the um, schedule has changed a little bit. I don't know if this is going to continue or if this is just because since there was no combat in this chapter, it was easier to uh, draw. But either way, we did get to see a, a bit of an increase in page count, and hopefully that maintains itself throughout the uh, series from now on. But uh, we start the chapter with Kikoru. She gets a message on her phone, it's literally the first page, and um, it basically says that Kafka is safe. Mina, the captain of the third division, uh, text Hikoru and tells her that uh, Kafka's uh, disposal has been postponed for later. Kikoru is kind of happy, but then she gets kind of worried and she's like, dang, I need to still get stronger because I need to be able to stop him 
And then she gets a flashback to how crazy Berserk he was, which I took to mean that Kikuru basically wants to protect Kafka from himself and also help him kind of like achieve his like idea of saving people by being a kaiju. Um, but since he is kind of uncontrollable right now, she needs to be strong enough to put him down in case things get bad. And I assume that this is because she owes him because he saved her life. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy with this setup. I think that it's really good. I actually really like Kikuru and I really like the relationship she has with Kafka. So it's actually pretty nice that we get a little bit more development of it. Um, that is obviously going to push over into the future. Then, um... We uh, get introduced to the first division vice captain, which is the, the really, really tall dude with the uh, shaved head with the scar on his head. Um, and he shows up to take Kikoru to meet Captain uh, Namuri of the first division, right? And uh, apparently the first division is very well known. We got a bit of world building and exposition here with that. Um, apparently they're so well known and so powerful that even they know them in America when Kikoru was staying over there, I assume training to get, uh, get stronger. And, and it's a good place to hone her skills, apparently. And uh, Kikoru is ready to learn from this First Division captain as much as she can. But then once they go to his office and see him, uh, basically we get this comedic moment where it turns out that, that the <laughs> super badass captain of the strongest division actually is this kind of like otaku, neat kind of slob guy. And I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, I liked the reaction that Kikoru had, like that kind of like really deadpan face. Um, and overall, the comedy there was pretty funny. And then we get the vice captain going in to discipline him. And they have this whole conversation that seems to be a recurring theme that wasn't really that funny, but actually established the character very nicely. Basically, um, the vice, ca the captain Namuri doesn't care about uh, cleanliness and stuff like that. He cares about fighting kaiju and what he does in his off time is whatever he wants right and the vice captain is a much more traditionally military guy because the vice captain is obviously an older gentleman and uh, the captain is pretty young person i would say around the 25 to 30 year mark i don't think he's really like significantly older than mina and hoshina and kafka um but the point is that um <laughs> the captain the vice captain goes in to discipline him we get a lot of comedic kind of moments there and then we get properly introduced to the captain and uh, his name is captain narumi and uh kikoru basically has no respect for him because she saw him be like a slob and stuff like that which i thought was pretty funny but then she decides that you know even though he's a slob and i don't actually have respect for him i'm gonna treat him properly with the right attitude in order to take advantage of the situation and learn as much as I can from him, right? And she does that. And uh, the guy basically is like, eh, I don't really care about ceremony or standing on uh, these kind of ideas of formality. I only care about one thing. And he never actually tells her what that one thing is because he gets interrupted because uh, the battle alarm rings and it, they get called in to go to a fight. Uh, this guy uses a very specific kind of odd expression that is, is, is it's like easy to understand. He uses sortie, but um, that's like an old fight, like an old timey, like English kind of way of saying a fight or like a, a, uh, a conflict. And I thought it was cool, but I didn't really understand why he would use that expression when like the guy isn't like obviously isn't old and he isn't British. So I'm not really sure what the point of that was, but like it was an interesting word choice. And, um, yeah, basically he tells Kikuru that she gets to watch close, like, uh, or stand close by him while he's dispatching the kaiju, and then hopefully she'll learn from it. And, um, yeah, he goes on to take the kaiju, and we get kind of this, uh, slight, uh, change in scene where we get to see, like, a bunch of different people fighting the kaiju. It's like this Godzilla kind of looking character. He's coming out of the ocean very traditionally. Uh, kaiju like we get to see i think the vice captain in this like power suit thing like this like small mecha suit like you guys know um avatar like the the one with the green with the blue people not green people and and the old guy that like had that mech suit that he would walk around the jungle with it kind of looks like that and it has these giant guns and then we get to see like actual like artillery batteries like the giant guns that they use on like uh warships 
um, shooting at the kaiju as well. And then we get to see like a helicopter that's passing by where Hikoru and uh, this guy uh, Narumi are. And they continue the conversation from earlier and it's basically that um, the captain doesn't really care about ceremony or formality or having a good attitude uh, um, if you're inept. He wants results. And then he does this cool thing where he like uh, pulls up his hair and his eyes change. Um, and they look kind of like speckled or something. I don't know. Like it's an odd design, but basically it like doesn't look like a regular iris, right? And we have, we've actually seen this two other times. Uh, we've seen it with Hoshina where he has the Renegon looking thing. And then we've seen it with uh, that guy that had his name changed again, who has like those like toad eyes, like the square ones with the cross on them or like mushroom eyes. I'm not really sure what the what the uh, right like term is, but a lot of characters have them in a lot of different series. And um, and yeah, and then he like jumps out with like this like case. It looks like a guitar case. He jumps out of the um, helicopter and midway through his jump, like he unfolds the case and it turns into this giant rifle with a bayonet and this like back spike that's like another knife kind of thing. And he like stabs it into the kaiju, shoots it and the kaiju just explodes. And we get to see that basically this guy is a badass. Obviously, he's the captain of the strongest division. He's going to obviously be like super strong, right? But we get to see just how strong he is. I mean, Kikoru even mentions it, right? This guy basically, like everyone in the first division, not just this guy, have broken the 40% limit, right? So they're over, like overpowered as hell compared to everyone else. And obviously, we get to see this guy, but it doesn't look like he... um unleashed any combat potential so he's just like baseline very strong and i thought that was really cool and uh, it's pretty interesting like overall i think that he was pretty interesting and kikoru is really excited about the fact that this guy is just so op because she'll get to learn directly from him right so um that's basically the end of the chapter and i thought it was really good generally um this does feel like a transition chapter like uh between like the first half of this arc or maybe the end of this arc into the following one, which will be like the sort of uh, first time characters have to train a lot. Um, because, you know, that's how it usually goes in uh, shonen manga nowadays. It's like introduce the characters, have a battle, do like the little tournament slash um, assignment thing where like they learn what it means to be um, whatever they're trying to achieve. And then they do a bunch of small missions and then they're like, okay, time to train because we suck at it. Um, and then eventually they'll go back into the larger story again. And we're, I'm feeling like we're in that section right now. It would be like equivalent to um, when the uh, kids in My Hero Academia start doing their like uh, hero names and they start learning how to use their powers better when they do the training arc where they go into the uh, forest with uh, the pussycats guys. I can't remember their names. Or like in Black Clover, when they start going into uh, the thing right before the arc where they are in the water temple and stuff like that. So it's kind of like that idea where they're like learning and, and developing their skills because they've realized that they're like way out of their element. And so that's a pretty good uh, kind of arc to start. And overall, I think that was it for the chapter. That's all I got to say about it. However, I do have one theory and I think that this is um, a recurring thing. I, I think that there's two possible reasons why this guy, the other guy, Gen, and then Hoshina have those different looking eyes. And, um, my first, my first possibility, or the first theory that I have is that they're all from kaiju killing clans. And so Hoshina, um, like clearly he states that he's from a kaiju killing clan that has been killing kaiju forever. Um, we know that he's from a clan, and so I assume that the other two guys are as well. However, if that doesn't really pan out, because these guys both happen to have swords or knives incorporated into their weapons, when we know that these weapons are really not as effective with kaiju anymore, um, kind of supports the fact that they're probably from a kaiju-killing clan. However, if that doesn't turn out to be the case, I think that the other reason for this might possibly be that since these guys are from a younger generation of uh, kaiju killing people and they've been around kaiju so much longer and using like like brand new, more sophisticated kaiju-based materials, 
they have this kind of like kaiju poisoning uh, in their bodies that changes them slightly and that makes them like slightly more powerful and that kind of gets shown through the fact that their eyes change. Now, neither of these are really well founded. I think the kaiju, kaiju killing clan one is a little bit better founded, but this would be a very interesting kind of idea because it would show why Mr. Shinomiya is in like is not so hesitant to try to get Kafka to help them because it's like humans are naturally progressing to that kind of idea of turning into kaiju if they continue to fight them the way that they are fighting them right now right so I'm curious to see what it end what ends up happening but my idea is that you know either all of the people with crazy looking eyes are from kaiju killing clans or they're all people that are in their like 20s to 40s that have been fighting in these like mech power kaiju suits so long that they have like taken in some of that kaiju power into their bodies um but yeah that's that's basically all i got to say about that but uh yeah that's basically it for me i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please leave a like subscribe and comment down below let me know what you thought let me know what you think of my, my about my theory do you think it's likely that they're gonna have these like kaiju poisoning kind of situations going on with their suits or is it everyone that has crazy eyes is just from a special clan um but yeah that's it for me i hope you guys enjoyed and see you guys later Thank you.